The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. So what is a woman? A woman is a female. What is a female? I wish I was making this up. But 10 years ago, you, you could just say this thing and just move on and you think nothing about it. But today, it's strange. A woman is a female part of humanity made in the image of God who bears the female qualities endowed from birth. For the purpose of procreation and nurturing of the fruit of her womb. Okay, all those words are specifically given in there to demonstrate that you must have a womb to be a woman. You must be able to procreate to be a woman. Even if you choose not to, you must be able to, naturally, by birth. A woman is one of a unique given design which enables her, with the aid of her husband, a man, a male, to produce life within her womb and all the essentials to provide for that life thereafter. The best milk, any pediatrician will tell you, is a mother's milk. A mother is a female, a female is a woman. A woman is a female who's a mother. Female is a woman, born that way, with a womb. No, I'm saying that because you would look at me and think that's strange, right? So why do you accept it when people say foolishness in culture? Why are like, we afraid to tell truth? You, you hear someone saying something that's so ridiculous, but we stand up and choose to accept it. Can I say this? The more we accept things that are not based in reality, is the more we're giving in and making it so in reality. If we allow people to change definitions of words that cannot be changed, like the sun cannot be the moon. It doesn't matter what you say. The sun will still be the sun and the moon will still be the moon. Like darkness cannot be light. It doesn't matter what you say or how you feel about it. Well, I don't feel like light is light today. That's okay. You can say in your feelings. It doesn't change reality. Why am I saying this? You must know how special and unique motherhood is. So a woman, she is exceptionally distinct from the male of humanity, yet complements the male in such a way that the two could become one whilst remaining distinct. This oneness is the bond of marriage in which the female role is remarkably different than the male, yet they remain equals. To say all of that, why? Because we're confused in culture now. Woman, special, a mother is unique. I will not, and you should not stand for someone saying it's okay for a guy, a man, a male, an XY to say that he is a woman and can become a woman. If you stand by and people in your family say it and you accept it, you are agreeing with the devil. If you are standing alongside people saying such foolishness, you are condoning and agreeing with the foolishness. If you can't stand on the basic truth that God made man male, female, female, in his image and in his likeness, then you are not standing for God. Regardless of how you feel about it or what you think about it, these are the basic principles and bedrock of culture. If you remove these things, you remove culture, and that is the duty of Satan, to destroy culture, meaning to destroy what God has made. That's his efforts. And so, subtly, things would creep into our families, because we have family members who are distorted in their minds. I think Jeremiah explains it best. Jeremiah chapter 17 and 9. Just the heart is evil and deceitfully sick. Who can understand it? When he's talking about, when he's speaking there about the heart, he's speaking about our, our will, our intellect, the way we think. Because the thought pattern of man based in sin is evil and perverse. He therefore cannot even understand his own basic makeup. So why is it that we listen to people and call them smart and educated because they have letters behind their name but they can't tell you what a man is and what a woman is. If a woman can't tell you what a woman is, then she's confused. She's deluded. If a man can't tell you what a man is, then he's confused. He's deluded. I mean, just five years ago, it was basic. It wasn't foreign. Ten years ago, it was unheard of to say that a woman was anything else other than a woman. God's purpose for motherhood is based on his purpose for mankind. God designed motherhood for the purpose of replication. Every young woman born female has within herself, unless um, something unnatural happens, she has within herself the ability to bear forth children. 
God has naturally given that to her. No one gives that to her. No one can make her have a child. Only God can give that. And he has. Man cannot do that. He's not like a woman. A woman's body is specially made up for that purpose. God said, Genesis chapter 1, 27, that the woman and the man should be fruitful. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28, God created the man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. Only two sexes God ever created. Male and female. There are no others. I know that that's not politically correct. And some people right now, nervous and squirming. The Bible uses harsher terms than I do. We have become so passive in our faith that we're afraid to speak truth. And if we speak truth, we're nervous about it. Don't be scared to tell the truth. You say, well, you should not be offensive. Please do not be offensive intentionally. But can I share this with you? The truth is offensive intentionally. People living in a lie do not want the truth regardless of how, can I use this word gentle, you put it. Because those words are truth and truth is being rejected. So when you say it, you will be disliked in this culture today. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, rule over the earth. Okay, so be fruitful and multiply. Now, the man part, the man's part of being fruitful is to become one with his wife. He then gives her a gift. She takes the seed gift and she produces a child. That's the only way it happens. That's the only way people come to be. Now the man called his wife name Isha, woman or female. The term wife means woman. The term wife means woman. <gasps> Are you serious? The term wife means female. So you mean only women? Only females can be wives? Okay. Now the man called his wife Eve, Kava, which means life giver, first woman. Eve just means first woman, life giver. Yeah. Her name is associated with her purpose. Just like Adam is not, watch this. Was it a name God gave to man? Adam means man. God just called Adam man. All he was saying was man. The Hebrew is Adam. So he didn't give him a title or a name entitled Adam. Adam is just the Hebrew word for man. So Adam's name is man. So the first man name was man. You get that? So now, he says, the man called his wife name Eve, first woman, because she was the mother of all the living. Now, the, the word mother in the Hebrew, Ami, means the bond of the family. The word woman in the Hebrew means the bond of the family. A woman can only be Isha. Isha is the bond of the family. So God specifically made the woman because when Adam was naming the animals, there was none found suitable for him. Adam was there by himself. Adam did not realize that he was alone. Adam never said, Lord, I'm lonely. Can you take me to ChristianMingle.com? No, Adam did not do that. Adam was not aware of his loneliness. Adam is unaware. God comes to Adam, you are alone. You need a shawl. And so God brings the woman to the man and the man just looks at the man and says, because <laughs> he sees something different. He sees something unique. He didn't see himself. He didn't see another of him. He didn't see another male. He saw female. He saw Isha. And he is really loving what he sees. And the man realizes now, God got you. No, seriously, God got you. If you're supposed to be married, then you'll be married. Relax. Don't run into relationship to find the wrong person. Because I know some people say, well, God brought you. Nah, -uh. no. God didn't make that choice for you. That's a lie. Here's why. Because God doesn't get it right 50% of the time. Hear me. The Bible never says when God finds a wife, he finds a good thing. It's just the man who finds it, a wife, finds a good thing. Not the woman who finds a man. The man who finds a wife, finds a good thing. Why? Because the good thing he finds is unique and special to bring forth the Imago Dei, the image bearers of God. Only a woman can do that. Replication is a desire by women. So we see these throughout the scripture where having a child is a natural desire of a woman. Why? Because God made it so. So why in culture do we deem to tell women career is more important than motherhood? That is unnatural. 
That is a device from the devil to destroy families. The harder and the longer you work, it's the less kids you have and the less you're interested in having them. That means the purpose for which God has created you is not on your mind. But this crazy thing called education, which really isn't true knowledge. A job which is only temporary. A person which is eternal. The image of God versus self-indulgences. Because that's the only reason why we still want a career. It's for self-perseverance, right? It's for self. I don't want a career for someone else. The career is for you. So what's the greatest career? Motherhood or CEO? You must be the CEO of your home first. Just to say something like that, uh, we have people who take offense, well, 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 why can't the man go out and work and so on and so forth? Um, uh, doesn't matter to me why the man can go out and work and so forth. It, 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 that's just how God has it. Why can't I do this? I, I can do everything a man can do. That's a lie. You can't do everything a man can do. You can't. You care how you feel about it. Men are built different than women. Facts. Men can handle things different than women. Facts. Women feel and gives an affection that man can't. Facts. Men don't typically think emotionally, even though some men do, and even though men still use emotion. Women are more caring than men. Facts. Not that men don't care, because women are more nurturing than men. Facts. Not because men don't nurture. So we need to understand the uniqueness of the two. Remember, all wives are not mothers, but all mothers should be wives. So what about the Hagars? Those who are placed in a very precarious situation, not by any fault of their own or by fault of their own. Does God just leave them? No, he doesn't. I don't believe that God has any desire for any woman to raise a child by themselves. And if you're going through that and you're doing that, I raise my hands to you because that is the most difficult job on the planet. That job is 10 times difficult than having four CEO positions because to raise one child is just very difficult with both parents. To raise multiple children being by yourself, I pray that God just blesses you tremendously. But do not place yourself in that position. Do not place yourself in that position. To be a single parent, if it has already been established, God will use you wherever you are. If you're not in that situation right now, women, you know when God calls you to be a mother. You know when God has called you to be a mother. How do you know? I am telling you, every woman knows when God has called them to be a mother. How do they know? When you're married. I'm single and I want a baby. Get married. But Pastor Dan, what if I don't want to be married? I just want to raise a child. Get married. The Bible views all mothers as wives, but not all wives as mothers. According to the scriptures, every time you see mother, it's a wife and it's a female. And anytime you see a female who becomes a single parent, it's because the man is irresponsible. It's because the man is irresponsible. The two shall become one flesh. They shall be unified. Genesis 2, 24. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 28. Husband, love your wives. In the Greek, the word is gune. In Hebrew, again, is isha. Just as Christ also loved the church, gave himself up for her, so husbands ought also to love their own gune, isha, as their own bodies. He who loves his own gune, isha, loves himself. This is interesting. We demonstrate a love for self, husbands, by how we love our wives. 1 Peter 3, 7. You husbands, in the same way, love your gune isha, gune, your wives, in an understanding way, with someone weaker, since she is a woman. Show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. It's not saying that the woman is less than the man. It's saying that she has distinct qualities and she should be treated with care. Mothers are very unique and women are very unique. This is why the scripture clearly shows the leader has a wife who is submissive and children and they're leading their home well. They're being honored, right? The wife is being honored in the home, just like Proverbs 31. So God designed mothers as a temporary assignment, just so you know. It says, leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife so God has gifted women to be mothers as a temporary assignment on this side of glory when we get to the new earth we're now living in all eternity with Christ Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach there are no mothers and fathers except one father there are no marriages or giving in marriage there is no more procreation all that is done with and so right now what we're doing as parents and what my wife is doing as a mother is raising God's children for him. 
we're being stewards over what God has given us for his purposes this is why when it says uh, we should direct the child in the way that he should go so that when he's old he's going to depart from it uh, the sage there is implying that that is being done according to the word of God as he starts off with in the first proverb that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and the whole thing is to direct the heart of the child towards God so that when he gets of age he's following the direction of God by his word God will naturally develop in them or it will allow the things in life to naturally develop who he's created them to be and they will fulfill purpose but our job is to lead them to God every parent every mother is an evangelist and God has designed motherhood finally for his glory Paul says in Thessalonians but we prove to be gentle among you as nurturing uh, as a nurturing mother tenderly caring for her children in terms of the apostleship Paul is viewing himself now he's viewing the work that they're doing as a mother it's only his, his only way of explaining the nurturing quality is saying as a mother that's the only thing he could find to explain what it means to disciple someone and take care to to, to care for someone is like a mother so in their minds a mother naturally has that nurturing ability and that's what you have that's that's who you are as mothers you you are naturally a nurturer and so fathers when you see your wives your baby's mother doing certain things and you think they're babying they're babying them that's what we say babying them yes they are because that's their baby even when they're 40 it's still their baby no matter where you are no matter what you are doing right now I pray God's richest blessing upon you and I say thank you thank you for being a mother even if you feel as if though you were not a good one you are still God's choice for your child God is still working with you allow him to use you allow him to work through you and allow no one to ever have you believe that God is done with you he's just started because even when we leave this earth you will see the rewards he has in store for when you are faithful married or single whether you're widowed whether you're divorced God is there with you lean on him trust in him be faithful to do what he's called you to do notice also in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers it takes the grace of God to change us folks how can you be saved if you're not willing to repent and the Lord Jesus Christ said except you repent ye shall all likewise perish